Basically, I got to a place in my career, we sold out 10,000 people at Jones Beach. I mean, it was, it was like the height of everything for me, and it was right around the time I figured out how my Live Nation contract worked. And it was right around the time I figured out how my record deal actually worked. And how did that make you feel? Oh man, it, it was like panic attacks. It was like, oh my gosh, if A plus B equals C, like I'm never gonna pay this back. I'm gonna be on the road 11 months a year just trying to pay back. Imagine this, you're a famous artist. You've just sold out a massive concert at Jones Beach with 10,000 screaming fans. You should be on top of the world, right? But what if I told you that while everyone else is getting rich, you're the one getting played? Live Nation is a giant in the concert industry, controlling a huge chunk of the market. They handle everything from ticket sales to the venues. But here's where it gets dark. First up, the advance trap. Live Nation gives artists a big advance. Sounds great, right? But it's a trap. It's like a loan that artists have to pay back with ticket sales. And guess what? The numbers never seem to add up. And Live Nation and Live Nation is they're 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 going twelve. They're getting everybody coming twelve ways, twelve times a Tuesday. We can get into that, and that's what I'm. Are you with Live about. Nation? No, I paid myself out of the deal, and mm -hmm. I had to pay twenty five percent extra on what they advanced me. But wow. it's like when you figure that out on the road, and you're thinking, man, why did we buy? Why did we buy three hundred rolls of toilet paper? Why do we have to get spend this much on catering every day? No one's eating the pizza. We're throwing out pies. What? Wait a second. What? In my contract it says because it's not their money. You got to spend this much on catering, and it comes out of my pocket. Yeah. But then I have to pay an advance back. Here's how it works. Live Nation approaches an artist and offers them a hefty sum of money up front, often in the millions. This money is intended to cover the cost of the tour, things like transportation, equipment, and staffing. But here's the kicker: it's not free money. It's an advance against future ticket sales. The artist has to pay it back, and that's where things get tricky. But before we get into the juicy details, let's talk about something that could actually help artists keep more of their hard-earned money. This video is sponsored by Tune FM. Tune FM is a revolutionary music streaming platform that lets artists get paid instantly every time their music is played. Unlike traditional streaming services, Tune FM uses blockchain technology to ensure that artists receive fair compensation for their work. With Tune FM, artists can bypass the middlemen and keep more of what they earn. So if you're an artist looking for a better way to get paid, or a fan who wants to support your favorite musicians directly, check out Tune FM. The link is in the description below. All right, now let's dive back into the dark side of Live Nation and their sneaky business practices. Let's say you get a $1 million advance. You're thrilled. But as you start touring, you realize that every dollar you make from ticket sales goes towards paying off that advance. And it's not just the ticket sales. You're also responsible for covering all of the expenses Live Nation has laid out. Transportation, catering, venue fees, it all comes out of your pocket, or rather, out of the advance. Now here's where it gets even shadier. Live Nation often inflates these costs. Catering, for example. They might insist on extravagant spreads that cost a fortune, even if no one is eating the food. And guess who's paying for it? You, the artist. Every dollar spent on these inflated expenses is one less dollar. And by the way, the advance that you have to give me is only on hard ticket sales. So the concept's called peanuts, parking, and alcohol. So when I sell out 10,000 people at Jones Beach, the person who buys a $20 hot dog, I don't see a dime of that. The person who buys $40 for parking, I don't see a dime of that. And the person who buys a $20 vodka and Red Bull, I don't see a dime of that. Going towards paying off your advance, but it doesn't stop there. Live Nation has what they call peanuts, parking, and alcohol. These are the little extras that fans pay for when they attend a concert. The $20 hot dog, the $40 parking fee, the $20 vodka Red Bull. None of that money goes to the artist. It all goes straight into Live Nation's pockets. They make millions from these extras, while the artist sees nothing. Think about it. You're an artist who just sold out a 10,000 seat venue. Fans are spending a fortune on food, drinks, and parking. But you're not seeing a dime of that money. Instead, you're stuck on stage night after night, just trying to pay back your advance. And because Live Nation owns the venues, they can control everything. The ticket prices, the expenses, the schedule. They have all the power. And here's the kicker. Live Nation reserves the right to put tickets on sale at a discount. Imagine you're counting on selling tickets at $100 each to pay back your advance. But just before your tour starts, Live Nation drops the price to $10 a ticket in a summer blowout sale. Now you're trying to pay back your $1 million advance with $10 tickets instead of $100 tickets. It's a nightmare. So why do artists sign these deals? Often they don't have a choice. Live Nation owns so many of the major venues that if you want to tour, you have to go through them. And for new or emerging artists, the lure of a big advance can be irresistible. They see that big check and think they've made it. 
but in reality, they're stepping into a financial trap. Let's talk about the monopoly aspect. Live Nation doesn't just control the venues and the ticket sales, they also own Ticketmaster, the largest ticket sales platform in the world. This means they control every aspect of the concert experience, from the moment a fan buys a ticket to the moment they leave the venue. They have the power to set prices, charge fees, and manipulate the market in their favor. And it's not just the fans who suffer. The artists are at the mercy of Live Nation's whims. If they want to tour, they have to agree to Live Nation's terms. And those terms are often heavily skewed in Live Nation's favor. The artists take all the risk, while Live Nation reaps all the rewards. But wait, there's more. Live Nation has another trick up their sleeve, the 360 deal. In the 360, Live Nation doesn't just take a cut of ticket sales. They also take a percentage of the artist's earnings from everything, merchandise, endorsements, even their recordings. It's a way for Live Nation to squeeze even more money out of the artist. So let's recap. Live Nation gives artists a big advance, which the artists have to pay back through ticket sales. They inflate the cost of touring, making it even harder for the artist to pay back the advance. They keep all the money from extras, like food, drinks, and parking. They control the ticket prices and can drop them at the last minute, making it even harder for the artist to make money. And if that's not enough, they take a cut of the artist's earnings from everything else. It's a tough industry, and companies like Live Nation are making it even tougher. But there is hope. More and more artists are speaking out about these unfair practices and looking for alternative ways to tour and connect with their fans. Independent venues and ticketing platforms are emerging, giving artists more control over their careers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more deep dives into the hidden world of the music business.